Council Select Board to discuss the East Montclair Fire Department FY 2021 Ambulance and Emergency Services Project request. Okay. So there you go. So I'll call the Council Select Board to order. Thank you for hosting East Montpelier. Yeah, we did it. You did it. Okay. So the meeting tonight, we had the budget meeting with um, the fire department staff on December 5th, and they presented to us what um, we have before us tonight. And Callis has spent um, some time reviewing our emergency services budget overall because we also have Woodbury. So, um, this lead off with that. The idea tonight is to approve the budget that was given to us by East Montpelier Fire Department. Well, review. Review and approve. Review and approve. We need to, yeah. Oh, you're just going to rubber stamp it? No way. Okay. <laughs> We're not in the habit of rubber stamping anything. Oh. <laughs> you and I just had that discussion 30 seconds ago. Oh. Well, you said approve, and I'm not so sure that you want to approve it, or I'm not so sure we're going to approve it. Right, right. so we need to talk about it first. Yes. We need to discuss it. All right. And then Bruce just handed us something about this, some kind of control. That's something to do after you play with the budget stuff. This is just a controller that they talked about briefly at the meeting two weeks ago. Right. And they now have more details and they'd well, like to use that fund that we talked about a, few, a couple months ago. Right. Because we questioned at the meeting on the 5th why the um, heating cost was so high. Oh, yeah. Propane cost. Um, the propane cost when we have a wood pellet boiler. And one of the things they said was they don't have an easy way to check to see when the pellets are getting low. I don't know why they don't. Or there isn't some kind of a, something or other that tells you how much is still left in the silo. Um, and then now it sounds like part of the issue is this controller thing, which might help with some of the costs. Because when the building was built, the idea was that the pellet boiler would save on heating costs overall. And doesn't appear so far to have met that standard. Well, the pellets aren't cheap anymore either. No, they're not. I don't think this gives you inventory. It doesn't look like it does to me. Inventory? No, the controller that they're going to upgrade to. No, yeah, that's on they, this. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. It's not on what inventory? It's not no, going to help it's not with that. That's all it too. is. They ran out of pellets. This yeah. doesn't tell you that. This has nothing to do with it. Well, this is just no. This is to make see how it's more. Yeah, but they ran efficiency. out of pellets, so that's what happened. They did right. a little window. You should look down. Nobody climbed up the ladder and looked down the window. Oh, is that what it is? I didn't uh -huh. understand what it was. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they ran out. Well, internet connectivity for monitoring and sending operational alerts. You don't think the operational there? alerts will say the boiler's not on? <laughs> you might say that. Yeah, I was going to say you got low on pellets. You think, yeah, you you think they might know by looking in the next Oh, room. so then you run out and it says, oh, you ran out. Yeah. And then you go order the pellets. No, that's not what's supposed <laughs> to happen. What's supposed to happen is you're getting low and then you order the pellets. Well, what's supposed to happen is you would check every fall to see how much you have left. Mm -hmm. Well, I would and you say check, check every, more than every, every few week months. or two. Right. right. See where you're at. So anyways, let, should we review the, the budget? As presented to us on December 5th. Were you thinking of going through it line by line? or? Um, I just want to see what Cal Select Board thinks about the budget. Um, and thank you, Bruce, for catching some numbers that might have been not quite right. Can you brief us on what numbers are? We're looking at the, um, well, the top lines on the page. There's the fire, it's on the first page. And then the ambulance budget bottom line figures are on the second page. And part of the big issue that we talked about on December 5th, and Katie did a good job in the, on the minutes, was they're really struggling more and more to find staff for the ambulance um, side of, the, of what they do. And that line item has slowly crept up 
from year to year. And they're using per diem, I don't know where they get these per diem people from, but there are per diem people that they hire to cover the shifts of um, the ambulance. And their hardest staffing time, and it's on the back last page of the staple document. They're, ha they're having a really hard time finding staff to cover the um, ambulance. And, and I can't remember the, the figure that we landed on, but if we were to have a fully staffed full-time ambulance crew, what was it, like $500,000? Well, it wasn't quite that much. That the second half of that sheet is something I put together after. The right. top half is what Toby gave us last right, this December. Part. Right. The bottom half is what I put together after the meeting. Yep. And that number of 386, 776 yep. is yes. a best we guess because I think it's really low. Did that add in the um, employment costs, workman's costs? Yeah, it's, the workers' comp it did. Yeah, in the 386. It's yes. in there. You can yes. see it's a line. Yes, from the line item four. So roughly 400,000. Yeah. Right. That and I don't remember. Is that 18 dollars an hour times two times 24? Well, it's 75 25. So 75 percent at 18, 25 at 20. 20 to match yeah. their okay. basic split. They're doing that. And that's 365, 365 days a year. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, so, and where are we now on that 400,000? We're at 297, 300. Um, so 100,000 short. Yeah. Where, well, are you looking at the second page of the spreadsheet? The last page. No, the last page. Last page, last number actually. The bottom, the right, bottom corner. You look here. No, no, I'm looking at this one. He's looking at the last page. Yeah. Bruce put together. Right, but if you look at this one, what they're proposing, for FY20, what, what it was in FY20, yeah. and then what they're proposing for FY21. That's the first page? Second. Second page, 243000 like Does that include the Marshfield money and all that? That's yes. always a confusion. The 15000 from the ambulance. Right, they're saying Marshfield salary, 41 That's the money they get from Marshfield they're putting in there. No, it's in, the, no, it's in their request. Yeah, but it's what they're doing is they're taking all of the Marshfield money and putting it directly towards, towards the salary, directly towards salary. So it's, yeah. So their salary right now is two forty three plus right. plus other expenses. Right. <clears throat> it was did that get include the fifteen thousand? That was I wasn't clear on that. Remember, remember you can't, that the fifteen thousand is income. Yeah, we complained about this before. Yes. By splitting it out with the Marshfield thing, yeah. it skews how you look at that. I know. It does. Yes. Forget that. Just Forget look it. at it as two forty two exactly four thirty six. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so but the number you have down there is two hundred and it's almost three hundred thousand. Right. The last including insurance and Okay. And payroll tax. Okay. Yeah. You're talking yeah. about on the last page. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So to get them to full time, you're saying four hundred thousand. That sounds a little low. It does sound. It, low. I do believe it's low. Yeah, I think it's. I low. think it's very low because I yeah. heard a figure that night of five hundred thousand. Yeah, we were. I think we came up with four fifty. Yeah, I think so too. It depends yeah. on your assumptions of how yeah. often a paramedic is on shift. Right. Because right, the paramedic costs more, but the savings, and I remember them saying this the other night. There's, there is some savings by having a paramedic on staff because if they have a call that requires a paramedic yeah. to cover intercept. it, yeah. they have to pay an intercept yeah. charge yeah. to like Barry Town or yeah. Barry City for that additional cost. So anyway, so that's some, some back some and dimes background. Up. Right, it is. But sometimes the nickels and dimes add up. We don't have a feel, I don't think, of whether it be a net savings, for example, to increase the number of shifts that they had paramedics on. You, you yeah, increase your uh, pay yeah. each shift, but each time you uh, have a paramedic call, then you get a savings. So we don't know how it works. Right, right. we don't know. Because there, there are a lot of times that the ambulance goes out and a paramedic's not needed. Sure, right. So they don't get paid that paramedic yeah. hourly rate. You know, anytime, um, I guess anytime there's a, a crash or sometimes they go to somebody's house and they refuse to be transported. So 
they're paying somebody for that service, but they can't get reimbursed by insurance because the person didn't go to the hospital, so they can't claim that charge because the ambulance only went to the person's house and didn't take them to the hospital because the person refused to go. There's all kind of little nuances. And there's some shifts where they don't send the ambulance out on at all. So uh, there's some shifts where they don't send the ambulance out right, at all. Right, right. No, there's no call. Right. Right. It's not that they don't have the, the ambulance available, it's mm -hmm. just there's no calls coming. Exactly. In, which is a good thing. So I'd like to talk about the options that we have here as far as how we move forward with funding their labor costs. Mm -hmm. So I think they should be funded fully for a paid staff as we envision with a $400,000 or $450,000. I don't think we should nickel and dime ourselves or them any longer. I think we should make a plan to move to full funding. It's stressful for, yeah. for them, right? Well, for just, the ambulance. And it, and it has to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's an eventuality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, every yeah. year we're like, oh, let's take fifteen thousand yeah. a year, and let's do this, and let's do that. <laughs> we have to end that game. We have to go. Mm -hmm. to, and I have some thoughts on funding the cap reserve differently, and I think we need to think about that. But I think we need to move to full 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 time staff. Whatever, if it costs four hundred thousand or it costs four fifty thousand, mm -hmm. we need to move to that over three years or however we decide to do it. And their charge charge rate per call would, would stay the same, or would they up charge? To what? They, they can only charge what they can charge. They can only charge so much. There's, there's, a, there's a cap on what they can charge. There's insurance. Right. They, insurance dictates. They, they, they go by the highest payment that they can get from an insurance company. Okay. And then depending on what insurance somebody has, like Medicare, yeah. Medicaid, pay less they than, right. than the actual okay. call. And we have no control on that, and that's not really our. Okay. You don't have, you have very few that are uh, okay. out of the pocket cash payments. Per right. Se. Right. They have a few. <coughs> right. Very, very few. few. <laughs> Many. So I think that I think we need a target of four hundred thousand or four fifty or whatever we decide on, and we need to figure out how to get there. Tear it up. Yep. Well, and I think Cal's has to talk about. You know how we we're gonna come up with that extra money. Well, I think that you need to say, if if we say it's four fifty and we're at three hundred right now, or three hundred, we're not at three hundred right now. No, That's we're not even are close right. to. Yeah. Yes, it's close, close to. We need to know what that impact is on our individual tax rates. Right. So, uh, Bruce, I mentioned to Bruce today to get to the four hundred thousand was three point four fifty or four fifty. What was that? We were talking about adding one hundred and fifty. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And Fair so enough. for us, that's 100, yep. and that's a little over three a little over cents three times, on yeah. tax. Yeah. Right. Was, what was it we heard from them in terms of availability of people to take shifts? If we gave them they as said much it was money good. as Yeah, they claimed that they could get people. So, what the they're doing, how they get away with per hour, per diem, is they hire people that have full time jobs at the places where the benefits are already covered. Right. So, that's how they get away with not right. having to pay benefits yeah. and not have to pay vacation days. They're just paying for people to come in and work. Right, this it, and that works. And it seems to work for them, and that's affordable for us in a way because you're not having full-time staff yet to pay benefits to, right, which is but, expensive. Right, but if we go to that type of a model, does that then mean that they will be looking to hire staff that will incur the cost of those? That's benefits? not what they said, but yeah, one well, no. for sure. That's not what they said. So I, I don't. I'd have to take that at face value. But I guess I think we need something but, more. Uh, so I haven't attended these meetings. The, the, the fire department's requesting that a full-time staff. Or the the ambulance, ambulance, okay, sorry, so if you look, at, that. you look in your packet and you look at the sheet that has a graph on it, mm -hmm. the blue means that's staff with two and eight people. The orange means okay. it's covered by volunteers. Okay. And what they're saying is it's hard to get volunteers. It's impossible. They're up in the middle of the night. Um, they don't want to do that anymore. There's only three or four of them that do it. And we've heard this story every single time. Yeah, every year. Every, every single year. Yeah. Yeah. And they're saying, you know, we're out there saving your life and we're exhausted and we can't right. do this anymore. Right. That's what they're saying. Right. No, I get that. So, and it sounds like the training mandates are pretty rigorous. So they not that many really people are getting the training. Yeah. Right. So they're rigorous for EM for yep. EMS stuff yep. as well as fire. Yeah. Yep. But they're not having, I mean, the ambulance is what 
is the huge cost. And right. if you look at this graph, if you look at the overnight 12 p.m. to 7 a.m., yes, that's when they have the hardest time finding staff. That's not true exactly. That's well, not, that's what this I, shows. It, they they haven't um, had people there then because that's the least amount of time people get called. Right. 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 So that's the least amount of calls they get. So, but that's covered by volunteers. So right. Ty so and Larry can by. stay home and get. Ty the and Larry can get out of the bed at two o'clock in the morning and do it. Right. And that's that doesn't mean doing. that you can't get people to to do it. It's just it's the least amount of calls, so that's why they haven't done that. Right. right. So they're, they're not talking about filling that for you. Yes. Them. Everything would be blue. Everything would be blue. Right. Because it would Whole be all time, paid staff. twenty-four hours. And, and that's the hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's right. Exactly. Budget yes. There. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Seth, can you talk a little more though about full time twenty four seven, and still being able to staff with part per diems? No, per diems are part. So the so right per diems part time. Nobody's working more than twenty hours a week. It's just a lot of people. I, I don't know about the twenty hours a week. I just know that these people have forty hour a week jobs in other places, and their benefits have been covered. Right. Those jobs. What I would be that's what just what they said. Right. What I would be concerned about is that they would then right. not have the per diem people and they would have staff people that then we would be getting into paying for medical insurance, vacation right. pay, sick pay. Right. I mean it could very easily go that route instead of staying with more per diems. And that's when the and that's when it would really jump up is right. if we didn't staff it with mostly per diems. My concern is that once we go to full time staff if it's not on per diems, all of a sudden we're going to be looking at wages that they're going to want to compare to Montpelier right. or Williston. Right. And, 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 and that the $18 an hour per diem is now going to turn into a fifty-five dollars or $60,000 a year position. Right. right. And, With benefits. And that would be the next logical outgrowth of the way we're going about this. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about full-time staff. We're talking about staff full-time. Right. Yeah. Right, but I can. I don't know how you control that. I don't know how you do either. Well, we should make that clear and prove in the budget that that's a condition of the approval. But well, my other concern well, I'm not would be if we, we had full time, then if they go to full time staff, now we're committed beyond each budget year. Now we're locked in. Right. Right. And, and we're and it's a steamroller now. Well, and it's we just going to keep going say. up. It's just going to keep the costs so, going to keep going up. Well, okay, so the costs are going to go up anyway. We've, that's all we've ever but we're seen. trying to we're trying right. to get to my a prediction. How many years ago? Yeah, well, we all knew that. But yeah. the, but the but the thing is, I mean, we I think we should establish the target. I'm not sure how you can control what happens after that. If we can, if the target's four hundred fifty thousand, <coughs> then we say we're going to take three years to get there, and that's a step by step process. Mm -hmm. After that, I'm not sure what we're going to be able to do. Oh, well, you're talking about a ramp up, not fully right. Yeah, no, no. yeah, I was talking about a ramp up. Oh, I oh. thought you were talking about fully funding it. Now. And, well, we don't. We can if you decide to. No, I thought I'm just that's what you I said. I thought that's what you said. No, I heard 100 and, f and then 50. And you did say 3%. How we're going to get there. I heard that. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. We're, we're, but whatever. Clarification. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, but the other part of that option three, because I had three options written down. Mm -hmm. One option was we can keep doing what we're doing, which I don't think is effective. Well, it's not mm. which is, fair to them, right? It's not fair, it doesn't work, it's nickel and dimes. Mm -hmm. right? That's option one. Option two was to do as I discussed uh, already. Well, I thought I discussed going up over three years or whatever would work mm -hmm. and keeping the capital reserve as they last present it, but they change it every year. Now it's a hundred and some thousand, hundred, three, five, whatever. I would propose taking the capital reserve in a different direction, which I've talked about before, but now I think what we should do, or what we could do, is have a small amount of the ambulance revenue go into the capital reserve, not for buying big equipment, but for buying the small stuff that they need. Mm -hmm. And then put the equipment to the town vote once a year at town meeting, the re equipment request, and the town would pay for it. So if they need a truck or an ambulance, mm -hmm. whatever, it would go to the town vote. This is a way of controlling the willy-nilly buying that's been going on. Mm -hmm. Buying an ambulance last month, right. buying this month, buying a new truck. 
we right. need to control that. Right, because now they can now they say, well, we'll take the money out, out of the, the capital fund. reserve fund. Yeah. Right. So I say take the capital reserve, notch it down so it's a smaller amount of money. Mm -hmm. Get that money take towards it, salary. And take the rest of the money put it towards salary. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then when they need a fire truck, they have an organized approach. Bring it to town meeting, we vote on it as a town, and we'll pay for it. But the, the other downside to that is, when you have the capital reserve fund, you don't have to come up with this huge amount of money, four hundred or three hundred thousand dollars. Seven hundred fifty thousand. All at all at once, which for mm -hmm. us, for the callous taxpayer, that's even at a, a third, is a lot of money. So you think that would be seven hundred fifty thousand? Well, wasn't that last truck that we wound up getting? They wanted to buy a new truck at one point. It was like seven hundred thousand. I don't think it was that much. I think it was like four fifty. It was four fifty. Yeah, we got a different. We got a demo. Demo. three fifty. Right, right. 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 Yeah. But, 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 they, they, but they, they used the capital reserve fund to help. Yes. Cover that cost, yep. which Correct. was. They're Good. using they're using the capital right. reserve fund to make payments on that. Right. right, that's right. Right. One of the things about eliminating or whittling down their capital reserve is is we're going we're talking about increasing staffing by a hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars on the very small peelier, which is three cents on the tax rate. Then you turn around and you've whittled away this capital reserve fund for equipment vehicles essentially, and. Those vehicles have a lifespan. They're going to wear out anyway. We're going to have to pay for them anyway. So instead of having $100,000 of ambulance revenue going into a reserve fund mm -hmm. to pay for them, now when those vehicles wear out, we're going to pay for it full price, full price mm -hmm. with another increase in the tax rate. And yep, if you right. assume that, it takes $100,000 a year to fund their capital reserve funds, and it actually takes more than that, mm -hmm. right? That's now a six cent tax increase you're, you're talking about. No, you can't compound it. That's right. not fair. That's right. Because part of that ambulance revenue that used to go to, to the capital reserve goes it's to staffing. Exactly. So, so that might be a fifth force we're talking about paying is at a tax rate would be less than that. Yeah, you might can't figure it. You're figuring your twice. You're figuring your well, yeah, we were talking about the 150 split two thirds, one third, which is 100. But it won't be 150 because you're going to take the ambulance revenue. You're taking the ambulance revenue and not so saying capital reserve. we should talk about it right. as, as, as what it is and not some fictitious $100,000 that's three cents on our tax rate number. No, that but was well, the problem is it is $150,000 that you're yes. looking to raise. Right, where you allocate it. But how, how yes. How you get yeah. there. Yeah. Okay, but, but that's true, Gene. If you need a fire truck for $500,000, it is going to cost money. But Correct. what you're doing is you're controlling, you are controlling the ask. There won't be so many vehicles being bought during the year. Right now, how many, we just bought two. Yeah. Okay, so if you say, you're gonna ask at town meeting <coughs> for your capital purchases, I guarantee you we're not gonna be asking for right. three every year. Right, well, it's the more difficult to ask. Well, it's a lot more than coming voters. into a select board and saying to 10 members. Are you saying we're pushovers? Yes. <laughs> I am. I mean, what I'm saying is I am saying that. that. The that and you know what? You can record that. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Good. <laughs> what I'm saying is that truck that lasts 26 years yes. is going to last 26 years either way. Yes. And we're going to have to replace it either way. Uh, no no and, problem. And, and, and to pretend that. So we're not all, all logically we're, this hundred and whatever it is thousand dollars a year we need for the capital fund isn't going to come off the taxpayer's head is short sighted. Well, yeah, what, but I'm what, saying there's going to be less vehicles. Well, I think it's the suggestion way, is if you have money in the bank, way. these good deals come up. Well, we got the money; hey. it's a good deal, and I get that. Oh would, yes. Would you call it iron disease? It's it's a heavy metal. Huh? Heavy metal. Heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 uh, and a lot of people have it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you have no money, you might be yearning to get that disease. deal, but it, 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 okay. and then you so look at the voters. If you voters, write up a proposal for that. town yeah. meeting and go and ask the voters, that logic. you're not going to ask for as many vehicles. Yeah. I don't. So, I don't. So what happens now is that. Gene sees one of the ambulances going down the road, spewing black smoke, 
and he talks to the fire department about it, uh -huh. and they say, oh my goodness, this ambulance is spewing black smoke. Uh, we need to put uh, $4,000 into it to stop that. It was 8000 oh, yeah. And then we need to buy another one because this one needs to be replaced. Why? Um, it had black smoke. What what it happened? Was, what was what, the what, what, yeah. Yeah. It was fixed. Yeah. When I know it was fixed. And, and by the way, we, we discovered it needs to be replaced. Why? We need to do that. No, no, we, we didn't discover what, it needed to be replaced. What happens, what well, happens if deal, they have to come to happens. town meeting? Uh, do they put and then you you yell at them for yes. putting eight thousand dollars into something that they're going to sell right away? Oh, no, no. Let's replay the schedule of events. Okay. 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 So <laughs> June first, the truck is going down the road and has black smoke. Okay. Gene's very observant, notice that. Yeah. They said the guys are gonna fix. Yeah. Guess what? Then you'd have to use it the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. That's oh, right. Darn. Collect your money out of it. Collect your get money, your, get, get your, your money back. Sign. You and just if, put that money into repair. And if you know some, what I do on my farm when something gets broken? Mm -hmm. I fix it and, and I keep if, using if it. If there's something more that needs to go into it, they put more money into it until You know what? You're imagining the, the and then worst you, and case. And you yell at them. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you imagine the worst case scenario. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's what okay. for. Okay, so gee, maybe that would happen you'd have to put money into the vehicle twice. But, but for somebody that had, I have over 20 vehicles that roll on the road every single day. We fix them. It's always it's, cheaper to repair. It's, it's much cheaper to repair. That's the only thing I It's always, that's oh, why I have a, uh, I always have used that have a fictitious repair budget. What's so, that? Five thousand dollars for repairs. So yes. two, two things. That's ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> two things. What? The, voter, the voters. The voters can vote down the truck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then they don't get it. Oh darn. But oh, then they okay. and don't and they're also always talking about how the truck or the ambulance has to meet some kind of code, 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 code standards yeah. Yeah. and changes. So. Yeah. So does that mean if it doesn't meet? Those requirements, they can't have it on the road mm -hmm. no. because it's not. Well, that will force yeah, their yeah. argument. That yeah. will force their argument. Yeah. You know, you know like I want to tell you something. Most of the time, stuff's not turned down. If they ask for a fire truck, most of the voters are going to vote for it. Yeah. And that's okay. But I'm not saying the voters aren't, don't, I don't say they don't need it. Okay. But what I'm saying is it imposes a discipline for buying equipment. Well, that works a little bit better in, in well, my opinion. For instance, mission. Woodbury. Yes. After all these years yep. of coming to the town when they needed a new truck and we need yep. to come up with yep. however whatever our half share is, they're now starting a capital mm -hmm. equipment reserve fund. Mm -hmm. That's the so, town? Or is it the no, fire, fire department, department on their own? Yeah. Fire department yeah, on their own, truck, which yeah. it's like, yes, finally. Mm -hmm. So that I mean, I it's like you... So we're going we, in opposite directions. Right, we're going in yeah. opposite <laughs> directions. We, we've been trying to get Woodbury where they're at as of last year, mm -hmm. and now we're asking East Montpelier to go backwards, I'm not so sure I'm sold on you think the idea. That's well, we spent the past four or five years pushing the East Montpelier Emergency Services to establish an accurate capital reserve fund. Reserve fund. Right. Right. And when we finally start getting towards something that resembles a real capital fund, mm -hmm. Now we're going to now we're going to now, now we're going to turn around and go in the other direction and say no this no. this isn't a good idea. I, I think the problem well, is it's us. It's and not them. If we're oh it's not if, if we're well no okay if, if they're coming in saying we got a great deal in an ambulance and we got a pile of money in the bank mm -hmm. and we just rubber stamp it mm -hmm. like we all did mm -hmm. then, the um, is then we are the problem. Mm -hmm. If the voters faced with the same set of circumstances may or may not have rubber stamped it, then we need to more often put ourselves in the shoes of the voters and maybe we've all been on select board too long. Okay, well, so I, all I'm saying though is I'm just no, trying to I'm just trying to change behavior. I'm just trying to change behaviors. All I'm trying to do. Change behavior. Well I think that right. we didn't necessarily rubber stamp things. We have given them, you know, sell it to us. Why should we agree to this? I don't think we've just been rubber stamping. I think we've listened really hard to and asked a lot of questions that they didn't like about why you need this particular Piece of equipment. Uh, I'm just saying that if you adopted a different plan on the capital reserve on buying vehicles, it would change behavior. But then when we do buy the vehicle, it's going to be, it's we're trying huge. to levelize things and make it right. more incremental rather than spiking. I mean, when we do that, what's going to happen is, is instead of buying yeah. Rescue 3 for $45,000 used, mm -hmm. we're going to buy Rescue 3 for $225,000 yes. new. Because right. that's going to be yeah. their only option if they have to wait to town meeting each time. Right. Yeah, they're going to spec out a brand new vehicle and 
with right. all the bells and whistles. Yeah. And bells. Then, yeah. yeah, bells. From bells. <laughs> yeah. Whistles, too. Whistles. 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 We just buy one Whistles. every 10 years. <laughs> no. Yeah, one. Instead of buying two a year. <laughs> well, I do okay, so that's just the second part but, of the No, I mean, options. it doesn't hurt to have options. I like the idea but, um, of discussing options. The first part of the discussion was how to fund their salary. If right, they so want to do that. Right, if you want to do it over a couple years, or you want to just do it all at once, or you want to do it over three years, I, I don't know. I'm just putting that out there. And I just think that we need to get there. So part of what you were suggesting in eliminating the capital reserve fund and using it for purchases would be to more fully fund the staff. Is that my understanding? Yeah, but, but um, we don't have to do it that way. We can just say, let's fund the staff over three years, incrementally raise, raise the money, mm -hmm. whatever it takes, and keep the capital reserve right where it is. We don't have to do anything with the capital reserve. Just leave it, we just accept the capital reserve. And just keep putting, putting ambulance revenue into it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we. And, and that's how the, the whole. That's thing an easy. Started. That's a cleaner. That's a cleaner. cleaner it's a very easy option. Doesn't ruffle anybody's feathers. Yeah. Well, I don't mind ruffling people's feathers. I don't feathers. either. <laughs> um, how about that, five years instead of three? Well, five years is a long time, long and you know time. what? Inflation rate is going to kick you on that. The, the world, the world changes. So, yeah. I well, and the problem is, just like yeah. everywhere else, the fire department people are getting older. No, we're talking about ambulance now. Yeah. Right. Well, that still tie in still ties in. That still ties in. They got. They have you some know? new members for the fire department, and I don't think that's part of our discussion at the moment. We're not talking about. No, that. we're not. Right. Even though. So why well, are we talking but about that? Because even the volunteers. The demographic makes it the hard to find. Volunteers them. are still some of the older people on the fire department. Yeah. Okay. For the ambulance. Okay. Oh, oh for, for the all higher, right. then the volunteers will be less and less. Oh, for the fire department? I'm, no, for the ambulance piece. If, if, uh, yeah, I just don't see the people coming along for the ambulance, though. And then that's, they're not, they don't say they have anybody younger coming along. No, and I think the per diem people, from what I've heard from the fire department folks, is that seems to have worked out pretty well. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you one other thing about the ambulance service, and everybody I talk to, they don't mind that it costs more money. Everybody I've talked to in East Montpelier, I say, you know, the ambulance service, it's going to cost more money. That's okay. We have an ambulance right here. We like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that you'd have the support of the taxpayers if you did that, if you went to yeah. Over more, a three-year period? Yeah. Our needs are going to increase as we right. age. Yeah. Right. And, and everyone I've talked to is in full support. Yeah. So yeah. if we're going to sit here and, and argue about it, why are we arguing about it when we have the support of the uh, I don't taxpayers. think we're arguing. I think we're discussing. No, no. It's fine. But I'm, I'm just saying, if we're going to beat ourselves up, mm -hmm. oh my God, we can't raise the tax rate and we can't give them more money for staffing, I think that's not a representation of the people, uh -huh. of the taxpayers. You know, well, one, one, one good thing is, it's good, um, is that as we age, mm -hmm. our needs are going to increase and the demands on our, our ambulance service are going to increase. Very good. But as we retire, our incomes drop and mm -hmm. we have income sensitized property tax, so a lot, a lot more is going to be shifted. The taxpayers out of out of town. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> well, and what I hear, right? and what I, I guess so. I didn't think so. What I hear from people is, yes, we need the ambulance, but I'm not going to be able to afford to stay in my house if the taxes keep going up. I understood. You know, yeah, and that's something that's. That is our. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. So it makes I, it. Everyone I talk to about the ambulance service. And it just cost more money. They're like, we're happy we have it. Any sort of well, I know, you know, when you need it, you need it. And I've had it show up at my house plenty of time yeah. with my special needs people. And yeah. it's, you know, it's there to save lives. And so, that's, so, you, so you want to raise it over three years? Or what do you want? I don't know, Callus Left Board. What do you? I what would that look like? Yeah, I guess we don't know what it would look like. What do you mean? What would it look like? Like for uh, us, the ML. It's roughly it's, one cent. Yeah, it's roughly one cent for us. We did it over three years, right? Yeah, you're looking at raising our 165 for this year up to something like 198. Yep. And Calus would jump up to close to 100. From 82. Right. What's the mechanism, though? Just like we were talking about with the with the trucks, what's the mechanism for putting a check on making sure that the money, the money, going back to where we were a few minutes ago, accomplishes? What we want to yeah, I mean, what are, what are their policies? Can what authority, if any, do we have to expect policies, review policies, hold them accountable for what they've already said? You know, what kind of 
what kind of guarantee do we have that well, how the money will be used? Well, and what kind? Yeah, what Save kind of? What kind of discretion do we have to put strings or accountability on well, it? Well, Bruce and I talked about that today, but it didn't sound like we had very many. <laughs> so this is when you come back to the fact you're dealing with an independent, independent right, they're organization. Right, they're independent. Right, right. Because you have to take them on face value. Why not? Or we, you're throwing an awful lot more money at them that when we discussed the chart that Sharon's got right in front of her, the, mm -hmm. the, yeah, the blue, blue one, lines. pink one, uh, Toby wasn't really very clear as to how many more of those pink spots he could fill, even if he had more money. Mm -hmm. It sure sounded like he was filling them, he was overspending his budget, so he was filling them as best he could. Right, because they did overspend their budget. So if we hand them another 50, 75,000 and they don't use it, where's it going? Well, or is that worth more discussion? Well, I, saying, I, I, uh, we're gonna, we're, we can give you the money, but we want to guarantee you it gets spent. I don't think we. I don't think we can do that this year, because it's too far down the, the path. I think maybe we look at. Why well, we're looking uh, at twenty twenty one? I think we need. I right think up the we need to have. First, right? Yeah. Yeah, but the Six it's got it. But it's got to go on the budget in the warning for town meeting in March, to approve the budget for twenty twenty one. I don't think, I can't as a Cal Select Board member decide tonight without knowing what how we're going to track this money how we're going to know where this money gets spent well maybe that's where we come back to the idea of incremental increases and maybe not maybe it's not a third a third a third maybe it's 25 percent in year one in good faith to work on a model that, that hits some of the other points have the conversation you know we're looking at 25 25 I'm making this up, 25, 25, 50, to see how it gets implemented in a way that responds to what you promise, because we don't want it just to get... Well, you know what, I've had, I, looking at what they've spent so far, mm -hmm. they're over budget already. Quite they are, yeah, So yeah. if they're already over budget, that means they're spending it on that. Well, but I it think... It doesn't we, mean that they're squirreling the money away. No, but I think it's hard to get a clear understanding from them of budget stuff, depending on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. I think we have to have something in writing, somehow, of what our expectation is for them to report back to us of how this money is getting spent. And what were you going to say, Bruce? I was just going to say that if you want to raise the budget, which I think you should, yeah, because I think we all are getting tired of uh, and this discussion. Playing send back the budget numbers with a letter saying we want to reopen the agreement. Remember, there's a notice right, period. Right, that's right. So that's just good. get both at the same time. And well, and I forward. think that's what we need to do is we, we need to reopen the talks with them because we haven't done that in a few years. And something that the Cal Select were to look at anyways as the bond gets paid down, what do we have, what equity do we have when the bond's paid off? Oh, you want to open that up? Maybe. You know, we're we're putting a lot of we're putting a lot of money into this. Yeah, you are. And what what do we? Yes, we get the services of ambulance and fire. What do we have when it's all paid for? We own a third of the building. We do. That's how it works. We need to look at the agreement again. Well, no, I mean, you know, a, the agreement the agreement says it's assessed value. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, right. I think Which that much, but, right. I would be okay to maybe. So you, we're going to be having a further budget meeting Thursday night, the Cal Select Board. So if you want to think about it, and not have to act tonight on something that we've just right kind of hashing yeah. out, we can talk about it some more Thursday night, mm -hmm. and then get back to you. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's fair. So, I mean, you guys have obviously had some. No, we haven't had any no, discussions. No, no, that's just that's that was all me. Um, <laughs> so that's all you. You're the troublemaker. There's another new one to us. It's okay. okay. Another new one. I mean, I was having the same thoughts earlier Wait. today. Well, we have to remember, we're only funding for one year. We might have a plan for three or five, whatever we come up with. But it's, well, it's good to year. It's good to have and, a plan. And that is a test run. And in the meantime, we could reopen the contract <laughs> and say this was our intent in terms of our funding. Whether a contract gets finalized in June, this was our intent for this year's funding. And going forward, yep. we, this is the path we're... We're, we'd like to see you on, and, and, we, and have, we get it in writing. We have to remember that that the ambulance requests 
currently, without increasing it, is a 10% increase. Right, right. Already. Right. Yeah, already. already. Yeah, it already, already is. is. Right. So, um, <coughs> I didn't, like I said, I, I don't know what I did with my papers from the other night, but does anybody remember how much they were already over budget? Why am I thinking 90000 Was that going to be like... No, 90000 was what they had expended in the first four months on salary with a budget line of less than 240 Right, so, right. so the they're way over. Said, ah. Yeah, we, we <laughs> figured it out. They're going to be over budget at the end of this this yes, year. Yes, that's definitely true. Because they're already spent more than like halfway through the. How much are they anticipating year? at this rate, being over budget? Well, they were going to be over sure. by about forty thousand. Yeah, they kept at the right. same rate. And that's on the salary line. Mm -hmm. the yeah. yeah, salary sounds like the wrong term because <coughs> we're talking about per diems. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, 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 loosely, yeah. it's right. loosely used. Yeah, no, I just thought we should say that out loud. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, so they didn't, I'm trying to remember what they were going to do to try to cover that overage. Well, they s still got the contingency, the 15,000. Yeah, 15, That's not what he said. No, no. Toby said he was just going to slow down. Yeah. Yeah. More volunteers. Right. More volunteers. Yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. That just can't. Which beats well, up on the volunteers. Right, I mean, yeah, they, yeah, we got to remember, I don't know, they, anybody not, here volunteer on that? No, I don't. I've right. thought of it. So, I mean, it's, no, I, 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 there's a reason I'm, I'm not the a volunteer. One, it's I'm a huge commitment. Full -time yeah. no, I, I, I understand, yeah. but I'm just saying. I am not beating up on them. Try, it's, I, it's I, just, as much for me, isn't it? I don't think that they should depend on volunteers. Don't the volunteers cost a lot to train anyway? I mean, isn't Well, they're already trained. So they come like tra I thought that there was something. No, no, they, no, 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 no. The no they get they have to have training. Yeah. Oh, so they, they come pre-trained. The the the, 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 the the per diem people come pre-trained. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The volunteers have to keep going through yeah. trainings, and yeah. they and they and in their support, they put in a tremendous amount of time into this trainings. They're very proud of the trainings that they yeah. do and have. Yeah. Um, and you know, imagine you know. Three nights out of the week, you get a call at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, imagine and that. And then you have to go to your regular job after yeah. that to make your yeah, income. Or once a, once a week, regular fire department meeting or right. Yeah. So I mean, I think brutal. it's it's brutal the <laughs> the amount of time and commitment that they make, and it's well, and also the ambulance service is a lot more active than it used to be. They got two ambulances. Right, and they're right? also in a serving more area. I was gonna say they're serving. And and the uh, training is a lot more rigorous than it used to be. The expectation is a lot higher. So part yeah. of part of what we could talk about in figuring out this step increase is would we ask Plainfield and Marshfield to contribute more to help cover the cost? I don't know that we it's can. Not to, right, yeah. I know, yeah. but we could ask them. Yeah, the fire department part. should be. So, so their rates to to the those two towns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They should be one with us a step yeah. with us. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so the know. way they've priced it before is they've done incremental increases to the town, and it's based upon services that um, have been provided by other towns. For instance, Barrytown was doing Plainfield, and they in the they based it upon that amount, and so it's not a. And, you know, it's not a very organized way to do it, but mm -hmm. it's probably the only tools they had to come up with those figures. Mm -hmm. right. So, you know, so it's sorry, also please. what what will the market bear type of thing. So, right. I mean, Toby's here and he could probably speak to that, but I'm not thinking that you're going to be able to raise a lot more money that way. No, but I think that we need to have that discussion. You know, what can we do if we're willing to start incrementally increasing the funding to help cover the costs of finding staff for this ambulance, which was what we're talking about, would that also benefit the other two towns, Marshfield and Plainfield, because there'd be more better staff? Well, not very much. I don't think that's a huge. Yeah, benefit. but it's a necessity to run the it's operation, a necessity, and, so maybe and, and so because they're part of it, they bought into this service. Yeah, well, it's a part of the increasing cost of the service. Yeah, I don't think you're talking a lot of money, but whatever you want. Well, I think whether yeah, you look well. at it as a, as a per call or a per capita thing. Yeah, it's two different the, things. The, the comp, right, they're two different things. Right. But whether you figure it on a per call basis yep. or a per capita basis, mm -hmm. uh -huh. that the towns, the contract service towns, uh -huh. should pay something on a par 
should be equitable. Yeah. Equitable, at least, with the, the towns that are supporting it. We shouldn't be sitting here increasing the funding so that we can subsidize ambulance service for Plainfield and Marshfield. I think you're always going to be subsidizing to some extent because you've got the ambulance service mm -hmm. in this town. Yeah. Just like Kellogg Hubbard Library. Yeah. Believe me, they pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to have that library there, and we're paying 42000 Right. So, you know, yeah, you can, only, you can only charge those member towns so much money. And I don't know what that amount is. I'm sure Toby knows a lot more than I do. Mm -hmm. But you cannot price yourself out of the game because you need those towns. The subsidized, they, they help us. Pay for this ambulance service. But they also want the ambulance service. They want the ambulance service. There's right. probably other vendors around that can give them service. I don't know. Well, so I, you well, can have that discussion, yeah. but I'm not the same saying, service we can. I, I'm not. I'm not thinking you're going to gain a lot of revenue mm -hmm. that way. But you know, whatever. Well, you know what? Every little bit helps. Sure. Well, but I don't know what we're going through. I'll you know, just like stick them. to what I said mm -hmm. originally: was you've got to get full-time staff. Well, and I don't think anybody disagrees that we need to have a better way of staffing it. There needs to be more money. We need to not expect the volunteers to just keep volunteering at all hours of the day and night. That's not fair, and that's not sustainable. But I think we need to have a, a good plan going forward. If we're going to do this, mm -hmm. what accountability do we want from EMFD on how that money is spent? Mm -hmm. Do we want to ask them to look at the calls and how much Plainfield and Marshfield is already paying mm -hmm. and maybe what, you know, if, if our increase is <coughs> three or four percent, couldn't we ask them for a, a one or two percent increase? I'm not I sure. can't see Toby's face to what <laughs> 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 he's thinking. Okay. I can speak when you ask me to. Go, go ahead, speak. Okay, so, so it's just like a dog. Speak, 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 please speak. Did you get, did you bring Annie with you? I did not. Oh, okay. Um, so, currently, the the contracts with Plainfield and Marshfield include a three percent increase each year. Yeah. Uh, okay. So they they're already coming up three percent each year. Yeah. And when we signed the last contract with Marshfield, they said, "Is this is this going to be like this forever?" And we're nodding our heads, saying yes, because. We're not there. We're not at the point where we are sustainable with mm. the town contributions to to staff fully. Um, we're a hundred thousand dollars away from that at least in order to yeah. have fully paid staff. And what's their response when you say that? Well, we haven't we, we haven't approached them yet, but essentially we have a three-year contract with both towns, and each year there's a three percent increase on their on their assessments. So mm -hmm. yeah. they're already in for three percent mm -hmm. for the near future till. Uh, year three from now. So you yeah. just barely renewed the contracts with this 3%? Yep. Mm -hmm. So the figures that are here reflect that 3%. That's correct. Each year. That's, That's uh, just nickel and dime. Mm -hmm. but, 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 I mean, I, mean, I understood. Every uh, nickel and dime helps when... Yeah, but when you're talking 100000 150000 you're talking 1500 bucks. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Whatever. You can be off a lot more than that when you're estimating a budget. You sure can. Right. So. No, but it responds to the point that he was raising earlier. Yes. No, no, understood. Fully, yeah. fully responds. And, and actually does more than that. It gives us a perspective against which to look at the increase that we're being asked for. Right. But we're actually tasking ourselves with a bigger increase. I understand mm -hmm. that. Right. And that's the part of what. The collectively. Yeah. Do you have the. And then, but we don't have, you wow. know, we don't have this mm -hmm. for that this proposal house. because we don't, mm -hmm. we haven't even nailed down that path yet, right? So you're suggesting that for FY21, we do an incremental increase of, did you say $25,000? No, I, I was saying three I'd years say get to the 450 percent. Yeah, uh, I, I'd rather have 30 or something there's, there's because they're already short. Yeah. They're already short. Yeah, you're already, gonna, you're already at 90000 or something? Right, so if we keep the staffing at the level we're at now, right. we'll be about $20,000 over budget mm -hmm. in this yes. fiscal year because right. of right. The, the per diem cost. That we're, I mean, and I, I have people to fill the shifts, I just don't have the revenue. See, that was the answer to the question. Right, that was I told you. And these yeah. are per diems. These are all per diems, yeah. So right now, the model is about 35% of our coverage is volunteers. So I guess and at that point we're going to essentially be close to twenty to twenty-five thousand over. Yeah. If we maintain that mm -hmm. thirty-five, right. 
or do exactly. you take that percentage of per diems to volunteer? So you're looking at increasing the number of per diems, not having full-time salaried exactly. employees with it's, benefits The model and works for us. We have a lot of people that want an extra day here, right. an extra day there. They're all skilled. The problem with trying to hire somebody in is I can't pay them enough. Every, right. every fire department, ambulance service is looking for these people, and they have... So it's easier to find per diems than it is it's, full time. It's, it's working, yeah. I mean, it's, just, it's a scheduling issue. I spend a lot of time balancing right. everybody's, oh, you're off this day, you're, you know, I, yeah, yeah. I have to right. do that every month. Yeah. There are some days where I only have so, one person that shows up. So the concern you missed um, was that, the, well, one concern that was raised is that we start heading in this direction where we see a shift from per diems to staff. permanent staff. And then we lose, then things start spiraling because of benefits. And then we have a commitment in terms of a staff person beyond the, each budget year. Well, so again, if, if it's per diems, I think that allays some of our concerns. Right. Yeah. So the only, the only other issue would be, can I, you know, if we go to paid staff 40 hours a week plus vacation plus benefits plus whatever, whatever we can attract, I have a smaller pool and it comes and goes, and who knows if they're going to stay. I have a lot of people that come in and go out, and they come and stay as a per diem for six months, and then they get a better offer or whatever. Mm -hmm. So with paid staff, that would be the same issue. And it would be harder to replace a paid staff mm -hmm. than it would be five per mm -hmm. diems to cover five days a week. So there's a hedge against going with paid staff is what you're saying. Not a hedge, but I mean, a natural. It, may, it may turn out that if you had um, complete staffing by per diems, it might cost you as much as having complete staffing with benefits. How, how so? Uh, why would that be? Well, with essentially, depending on who we get, I mean, we, it, would we have to offer health care? We can offer the job without health care. Well, you can, and you, yeah, it's up to so many, what is it, 50 employees or something, you don't have to offer right. health care? Oh, you pay a penalty if you don't offer health care. If you have less than 50? Yes. Well, I mean, we can, we can look at that, and it would probably be a higher number if we did that. But then you'd have to have more more paid staff because you have vacation and holidays and sick days. Right, and then you have to have somebody to run. To cover. Then you have to have somebody to run the payroll that can account for all of those things and keep track of all of that. <coughs> you kind of have, person. You have what I'm hearing is you, that's a different person. We have right. We have that now because they're per diems. Well, but, well, to, we, but Toby's we doing all of that. All, right. the we volunteer all the administrative work. Right. Right. right, exactly. Payroll scheduling. Right, and the more and the, is right. and the more staff you have, especially if they're mm -hmm. full-time paid staff, the more administrative costs it's going to be. And it's going to be harder to volunteer to right. Well, so, so I think what, what we want to be really clear that we've documented, that we heard from Toby, is that there's right that he doesn't see a particular even advantage neither an advantage or an imperative to shift to staff full-time paid full-time paid staff i would like full-time salary. employees salary. i guess i mean as volunteer right yeah. i mean i guess i am i i get the need to have an increase in the amount of money for staffing yeah um and I would support that, yep. knowing that it's per diems. Right. But I think that the, we need to, as at least I think the Cali Select Board needs to look at the impact of this upage every year for two or three years or whatever we decide. On your tax rate. Right. Okay, so one thing I want to say though, there is a disincentive to move to full-time staffing. That's over here. Right. And there is also on the budget side. Mm -hmm. Because you do control the purse strings to some extent. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we're, want, what I would like, and I think we would like to go to full-time help, full-time staffing, is With that we feel bad for the volunteers. With the per diem staffing. Staffing full-time. Staffing full-time. Okay. With per, With per, per diem. Diems, right. Is we, I mean. we feel bad for the volunteers. Yeah, okay? absolutely. But we're not going to feel bad for the um, per diem people. Right? No. They're no. getting paid. No, they get paid. So right. we have less being thrown at us as far as uh, leverage. Okay? So they won't have the same leverage. No disrespect to you, Toby. When they say, we really want to go to full-time staff because we really feel bad for per diem. No, that won't work. But if we feel really bad for the volunteers, and that's working, 
It's working. <laughs> when Toby sits there and Ty, you oh, know, we're exhausted and we can't do this anymore. Look at Larry, he's 80 years old, he's still doing it. Okay, that won't be the same argument. Right. Be, it'll be a different argument. We can stay, stay here and say, no, you're not getting more money. And you know what? The per diem works, okay? But we can't do that when it's volunteers and they're all sitting there looking exhausted and, and overworked. We're I like, oh my God, those poor guys. Yeah, I don't disagree, right? I don't disagree with you. Okay, I want to run. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 so I'm saying, you know, it's going to be a different discussion. Yeah, no, I, don't, I, I hope we don't can don't remember that in 10 years yes, when that's no. exactly what we're hearing. Okay, right? but I'm just but saying it's why, a different discussion. Well, I don't, but want, I, but I don't and want the you paramedics do control all away from the same scene that they're responding to. And, so I, I'm just I saying that if we're not comparing <laughs> apples to apples in the future, right. you know, well, it's going to be a different discussion. Right, and, and but I think we need to have these discussions well documented. Mm -hmm. um, we might want to, you know, think about what we might want to put in writing, if anything. Mm -hmm. I just want to, I just want us to be clear, think it through, yeah. so we know what we're going to do going forward. Yeah, um, I, I'm not saying you shouldn't. Well, I'm just putting that out there, that it's going to be a different discussion What's if you're this? going to go to full-time staff, and there won't be that emotional <coughs> blackmail right now when you're looking at the poor volunteer that's 100 years old and he can't get out of bed, and he's Choice getting out of bed. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, no, it's, it's a different discussion. So I didn't say this, but the reason I was late to the meeting was on the ambulance call. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> See? But that won't happen. Were you the oldest? By a long shot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, see? That's actually good. So, yeah. did you have Purdue? So, I'm just telling you. Oh, yeah, I, I, I had Purdue. Yeah. Right, I respond too. That's right. a good no, point, too. Don't right. run for office. That's oh, a good point. Did. <laughs> but, okay, so, so then here's another question, Toby. If you had more money for Purdue's, would you, or Larry, or Ty, or somebody, still have to continue to respond? What what would make it so that you didn't so have to do that? So if it were if it were complete two people on twenty four seven, there would be some times when an ambulance call would come in and only one per diem or no per diems would be around because right. of the availability of per diems. I don't have a hundred people waiting in line to take a shift with me. Okay, so that's my I have probably night. fifteen yeah. to twenty people some, at most. Right, and you it's, said the ambulance can't go out with just one person, obviously. There, well, who's going to hold the other end of the cotton? Well, well, that thing's yeah. heavy. Yeah, okay. we should have had a <laughs> broken your tape. Well, what you're doing when you fund per diems is you have more people available. You right, well, that's what I'm money. saying. It, and it, so it, once in a while they have to go on a volunteer call, or Toby has to go with a guy, or okay, yeah. so Ty has to get out of bed. That's okay, because the it's, Seth, it's not, it lightens the load a lot. Seth, you didn't right. listen to what I said. Yeah, I listen so to it all the time. If, you know you don't. <laughs> if you had more money for per diems, yes. Then you and Larry and the folks that are always volunteering might not have to do so much. Is that correct? It is correct. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear. That's good. That's what you just said. Just so, so, so it's yeah, right, right, right now, story. sort of the biggest void is from midnight till seven or eight. We saw that. Right, yeah, and you can fill that. I, well, for one of the shifts, I filled fifty percent of those night shifts with one person. So, huh. so that means today, one of you has to go. Somebody has to go, right. But yeah, if you had the money, could you fill it too? If we had the money, I could possibly. Yeah, people love to sleep and get paid. Well, yeah, right? Um, because that's, that's a lease. Yeah, hey, sleep. I'll sleep at your house instead sleep of mine and make money. No, you won't. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you get leave the least amount of calls, though, between uh, midnight and 7 in the morning. It's hard to say. Sometimes there's that's all can, the calls. That, I was going to say, that can be the most active time. Right. It's yeah. like I mean, if anything's going to happen, that's when it's going to happen. I can pull numbers, but there's times when I think Ty and Larry didn't have a night's sleep all week. That's yeah. not good. No. Right. Mm. No, and that's what I, I did bring See? that up See, earlier. Feel. Uh. <laughs> are you, are you working on being more sensitive, Seth? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> is, that is, that I, I'm trying to make the point that the discussion would be different. Yeah. If we yeah. No, I hear that. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and I think it's an important one. Sure. I got that before the anecdote. Yeah. Very good. You probably should have well, you're clear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good point. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So, Cal is select, but I don't, I'm not ready to make any decisions tonight. I don't know about anybody else. Too tired. So, we're going to have to talk about this further. Yeah, when do we meet? Thursday, Thursday? Thursday night. Yeah. Interesting. That's good. But, you know, it makes sense, just generally, you know. I mean, I, I this has been a concern of all of ours for, Years. just so you know, we're just trying, 
trying to make sure we know what the heck we're doing <laughs> and we need to digest these numbers. But I know we've all been concerned about the level of volunteer effort and yep. you know the exhausting level. Yep. And I, and I was and just trying to hid that from us. I was just we, trying to address aware. the concern yeah. that's been happening over the last few years. Yeah, I yeah. didn't want to keep nickel and dime it. I just don't yeah. think it makes sense. Yeah, so, no, we, we're yeah. aware. And that's why I, I, you know, that's why I came up with it. Yeah, no. And I'm definitely not trying to step on anybody's toes. If anybody has better ideas, go for it. Mm -hmm. I just haven't seen those happen, and I've been part of this for a while. There's only so many options. Right. And when you're talking about money, so the to raise it out of nothing. The Cal Select Board is meeting Thursday night Mm -hmm. do budget stuff some more mm -hmm. we're going to have to meet again after the holidays mm -hmm. so we need to have a date by which we all need to make this decision and mm -hmm. i have well, we to got a go, a go to printer day what is that um i didn't bring it with me but nice. i can find that out because end we need to have a and is it we the may end of january that was mid it's like mid january mid. so we may need to have we'll another <laughs> joint meeting so they can inform so that. we'll let you know if we need if we think we would like to get back together and Talk some more. Do we want to? Do we want to go back to kind of the straw model of what we're going to take back for discussion, or do we want to leave that kind of unsaid so we can play with numbers? I think and I'd circle like circle back. I think we should play with numbers to see what okay. percentage we might really be able to afford. And, so, and so I really think those one. I think one third, one third, one third is the way I'd like to approach it. But you can do whatever you want, and but, no one else has really thought about that either. So but the one, one third, two thirds, three years. Oh, 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 the 25 years. Yeah, one and we're letting one because these guys are already over budget. Yeah, yeah. So, so, what, what, think about that. so we're looking at one hundred and fifty thousand dollars over three years. Right, a third of a hundred. For us, it's a third. A third of one hundred and fifty over three years. Right, but yeah, really but then you get the the third of one hundred and fifty. Callus's share is one third of whatever that amount is. Fifty thousand. Right. Over three years. Yeah, we're three we're, years. Only, we're only really committing to one year's budget, so I don't. Sure. Whatever form. Yeah, but if I do the one third, it's not like yeah, we're yeah, yeah, it's it's sixteen grand. We're, at very grand. least, it's a test run, but yeah. we'll see how it works. You know, right? It's not, it's not a, a, I'm not committing for three years. Is it a penny or a tax rate? Yeah. I don't know. We have to figure it out. Well, that that's the useful, right. right? So that's what we have. To, I think that's what we need to do and talk about it further. I think a penny yeah. in Cal's is nineteen thousand. So something yeah. like that. Touch yeah. less than a penny, though. <clears throat> Depending on what the latest transit's fine. Right. They're definitely their impact will be less than it will be on these one third. Right. Of course, the one third, two thirds right. is always right. skewed. We know that. <laughs> we can do that. We can do that you math can do in that. Dallas. I'm just making sure that he can do. The I math. can do the math. <laughs> okay. Anything every else? Every farmers to, know where every penny goes. All right. Anything yeah. else to talk about? This comment. They do. And they, all go, they all go out though. No, I I just think. You know yeah. what? There's a lot of farms that haven't survived. I like the idea. But I can tell you one that has. It ain't far away. It needs to happen. Yeah. It's a reality and relying so heavily Anyone. on the volunteers. Okay. And the volunteers aren't getting any younger. Are you getting younger? I like to think this boiler thing. Oh yeah, this boiler thing. Right. We want to right. talk about this eight hundred and thirty-seven dollars. No, just do it. Thanks. This is more nickel dimes. Yeah. Come on, really. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. We don't have more than you want to say. Thank you. You want to say to Seth that you're comfortable with it? Say it. We're good with the eight hundred and thirty-seven dollars. Oh, good. For the boiler. Did you do that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Pellets select board. All right. Like what are you make? paying for pellets these Motion days? I'm just curious. Some of a ton. Uh, for a second. So about four. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 John, say aye. Aye. Aye, aye, Captain. Four. 